you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under pains and penalty of perjury. I do. Please have a seat. Thank you. Could you please introduce yourself to the jury spelling your last name? Yeah, Officer Clifford Elston, E-L-L-S-T-O-N. Tell the jury what your occupation is. I'm a police officer with the Manchester Police Department. How long have you been a police officer? About four years. Are you a certified police officer in the state of New Hampshire? Yes, I am. Uh, can you please describe for the jury what your duties and responsibilities as a police officer with the Manchester Police Department encompass? Yeah, I patrol my assigned area, whatever that may be for the day, um, in my fully marked cruiser, typically wearing the full uniform of the day. And when you say the full uniform of the day, is that what you're wearing today? Yes, very similar to this. Were you working for the Manchester Police Department on June 4th, 2011? I was. Do you remember what shift you were working? I was working 4 to 12s. And what were you wearing on that day? Um, outfit similar to this. Not the exact one. So was it pretty clear that you were a police officer? Very clear. Can you please tell the jury what happened on June 4th at about 4.45 p.m.? I was in headquarters. Uh, I was approached by shift supervisors. I was informed that there was a large gathering of individuals outside who were facing walls of the uh, police department. Okay. And so what was your involvement in that? I went outside to assist with the uh, evidence gathering, photographs, etc. While outside, did you have contact with a person by the name of Catherine Aker? I did. Can you please uh, point her out by describing something that she's wearing? Yeah, she's wearing the uh, black sweater with the light shirt underneath. Can I please let the record reflect the witness identified the defendant? It does. Can you please uh, tell the jury about your interaction with the defendant on that day? When uh, detectives first attempted to gather photographs of the uh, chalk or graffiti, um, they first attempted to uh, take photographs of the corner at Chestnut and Merrimack, and that is where uh, Miss Agger was standing at the time. Um, officer, if you don't mind, I'd like you to come down and look at State's Exhibit 3, which is the diagram on that board. Yep. Is that a fair and accurate representation of how uh, the layout is? Why don't you come over to this side, Officer, because you're yes. blocking the jury's room. Yep. Exactly. That's right. Is that a fair and accurate layout of like, the police department and the streets and all that stuff? It is. Okay. And when you first uh, saw the defendant, where was she standing? She was standing right at this corner right here. Okay. Is that where the exit? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yep. Sorry. And can you please tell the court, tell the jury um, what, what, you, what you heard and what you saw? Um, what I heard is I heard Sergeant Mujin, Sergeant Patty, um, speaking with Miss Agger. They were asking her to move. Uh, I believe they asked her about twice. Um, she uh, physically, ver verbally refused to move. They then instructed her that she was going to be placed under arrest for a refusal to comply with their commands. And was she in fact arrested? She was. Um, while she was being arrested, um, did she submit to that arrest? Not, not initially, no. And um, did you have a chance to review the videos in this case? To I did, yes. I'm going to show you what they marked as states two. And in particular, we're just looking where, where you are as well in this video. Yep. You can point that out to the jury. I'm gonna, I'll just rewind it to the beginning. <coughs> She was. Yes. And did you have to assist? You said you had to assist in, with Sergeant Patty and Sergeant Mucci in actually handcuffing the defendant? I did. Uh, they had to restrain her hands while I applied the handcuffs. Mm -hmm. And was she still struggling at that point? Yes. Mm -hmm. Nothing further at this time, Judge? Press examine. Sergeant Patty asked me to move, correct? That is correct, yes. And you stated that I verbally refused to move, is that also correct? That is correct. 
Um, did I state um, that I wouldn't move? Did I say something like, no, I will not move, or I have every right to be standing here? I don't remember the exact words. I just remember you complaining about the, uh, the commands given to you. Okay. Um, I, I would like to show you the first video, and um, if you could please point out where or what words exactly I use when I um, allegedly verbally refuse to. Could you please point out where I verbally refused to move and what words exactly I used? Yeah. Well, you might not have said that you specifically refused to move. The fact that you're complaining and you were arguing with the officers while they were giving you commands and you were physically not moving, that was coupled together. I would take that as a verbal refusal to move. Um, do you consider trying to ask a question to be complaining? When it's given as a lawful order, yes is excuse me would you get off the chalk please a lawful order or is that a polite question i believe it's one of the same it is a polite question and a lawful order yes um, according to the english language that is not even an order correct it is a question Objection. sustained okay um You stated that I struggled as I was being brought to the ground. Correct. Could you describe how I was struggling as I was being brought to the ground? Yes, you, uh, you allowed your knees to buckle, therefore allowing your body col to collapse to the ground. Okay, so um, was I trying to pull away as I was falling to the ground? I remember you had your arms rigid, but uh, I wouldn't describe it as pulling away, no. Okay. Um, okay. 
So, you believe that I purposely collapsed to the ground? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, did you did you see when initially um, Sergeant Patty grabbed my arm and turned me? Did you view that? I was there for that. Okay. Um, is it reasonable to believe that when somebody grabs onto you and turns you unexpectedly, it could cause you to lose balance? I assume that's a possibility. Um, did I attempt to run away? No, you did not. Did I use force against you, such as hitting or kicking or fighting or anything of the sort? You did not hit, kick, or fight, no. Okay. Um, were you in fear of great bodily harm from me at any time? It's always a possibility. Um, I, I don't think that answered my question. Were, were you in fear of me specifically? Did I do anything that caused you to be afraid that I would uh, cause you great bodily harm? When you collapse like that and I have to take on your body weight, it always poses a pretty significant in, uh, risk of uh, injury for the officers. Okay. Um, once I was on the ground, did I um, struggle or did I lay still as you handcuffed me? Kept your arms rigid, I remember, but uh, did not struggle any more than that. No. Okay, so my, my arms were tense when I was lying on the ground, but I was not trying to pull them away or um, something. Correct, yes. Okay. No more questions, thank you. Thank you. Officer, just briefly on redirect. Um, <coughs> When was the defendant struggling? When did you see her struggling? I'm sorry? When did you see her struggling with you and the other two officers? Uh, when she was told that she was going to be placed under arrest. And she was struggling with all three of you? Correct, yes ma'am. Okay. And can you explain for the jury, what what is your definition of struggling? Like, what do you mean by struggling? Uh, that that could be uh, that could be construed as passive aggress, uh, of resistance. Well, uh, I'm going to re redirect you. <coughs> what do you mean by struggling here? Yes. What do you mean Passive by resistance. Okay, and explain that to the jury again. Uh, what was the defendant doing to struggle? The buckling of the knees, uh, you know, the fact that you know she wasn't just readily available, placing her arms behind her back, allowing us to properly cover. So, so you're saying that she wasn't just giving you her arms to be able to handcuff her behind or anything like that? Yes, ma'am. No, nothing further, Judge. You're entitled to ask questions in response to what she just elicited, if you'd like. You don't have to, but you're entitled to. No more questions? You may step down. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, that's going to uh, be the state's case for this case, Your Honor. All right, uh, it's noon. Uh, we'll break for lunch, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Uh, break for an hour, we'll resume at 1 o'clock. As you know, you're not to discuss the case with one another or engage in any independent research, either actual or virtual. We'll see you back here at 1 o'clock. All right. I understand the defense arrests. Is that correct, Ms. Sager? Yes. Uh, closing arguments, Ms. Sager. Throughout the course of this trial, you've seen two videos and heard testimony from three different police officers. The testimony of the three police officers had parts that were conflicting, such as Sergeant Patty and Mucci stated that I pulled my arms away and purposely collapsed to the ground and did not recall that I was turned by Patty when he initially grabbed me. Elston did not testify that I was pulling my arms away and confirmed that I was turned by Patty. He also testified that I was not pulling away or struggling on the way to the ground or while on the ground as Patty and Mucci claimed. The evidence shows that Patty reached for my arm and shoulder and then pictures me mid fall on the way to the ground. In the video, there is no scene that can obviously and clearly be determined as struggling or resisting. Uh, Mucci stated that I delayed the arrest maybe four or five seconds, yet there is no four or five second clip of struggling. You have heard different interpretations of what happened or what, based on the evidence, could reasonably be, uh, be believed to have happened. 
I ask that you consider the evidence presented to you and find me not guilty based on lack of proof and, quite simply, that I did not resist arrest. Thank you, Lord. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. As you heard all three officers testify, the defendant was struggling with them. And when you see that video, and you can take that video back with you to the, to the deliberations, look at that video closely, and you will see that the defendant was struggling with them. All three testified that she was struggling when they were trying to handcuff her. It took three police officers to handcuff the defendant because she wouldn't submit to the rest, which is the law. I'm going to show you that video once more in here, but as I said, you'll have this in the jury deliberation room if you want to review it again. But pay close attention. Um, this is the second video, which is the far away shot that was taken from somebody that was standing in front of the courthouse. You will clearly see that the defendant is struggling on the way down. She's moving on the way down. She's struggling. She's not submitting to the arrest. She was submitting. It wouldn't take three officers to handle. Party blocking me anyone's view. instruct you on at, at the close of, of the closing arguments. First is that the defendant acted knowingly, meaning she was aware of her actions. It's pretty clear from the video that she knew what she was doing. She made a choice that day, and it wasn't to follow the lawful order of Sergeant Patty. She wanted to argue with him. She didn't want to move. And she didn't move after she was told to by a police officer. That she physically interfered with another person, that being Sergeant Patty, Sergeant Mochi, and Officer Elston. You heard from the officers, again, she was struggling. She wasn't submitting. If she was, it wouldn't take three officers to handcuff her. She was resisting, physically resisting. She doesn't have to kick. She doesn't have to bite. She doesn't have to hit to be, resist to be considered resisting arrest. That's not the law. And it doesn't matter how long that she struggled for. The fact of the matter is, she did struggle. Doesn't matter if it was one second, doesn't matter if it was five minutes, it's still resisting arrest. The third element is that she knew Sergeant Patty and Sergeant Mucci and Officer Elston were law enforcement officials. It's very clear from the video that they were police officers outside the Manchester Police Department. There should be no doubt in your mind the fact that she knew that they were police officers and that they were trying to arrest or detain her. You'll, you, as you heard on the video a number of times, Sergeant Patty clearly tells her, you are under arrest. You don't move, I'm going to have to arrest you. You are under arrest. And that's what he has to do. She knew she was being placed under arrest, and she didn't want to submit to that arrest. We are here because of the defendant's actions on June 4th, 2011. It is a crime to resist arrest. We are not here to decide whether what the defendant was doing was legitimate. You're not here to decide whether you agree or disagree with the Manchester Police Department and what they did. It is not for us to decide whether they are right or wrong. We are here to decide whether or not the defendant resisted arrest. That is the crime that she is charged with committing. The resisting law is in place for a reason. It's to help discourage help, self-help, 
provide for the safety of officers and administer justice. Laws are written for a reason. Without them, what kind of chaos would there be if every time somebody disagreed with an arrest or detention by a police officer that they could fight back and they could resist? What kind of danger would that impose on everybody, including the officers and the people around him, if you, just because you disagree with the officer that you could resist arrest? Did she hit them that day? No, she didn't. But as you heard one of the officers testify, I, I don't know what kind of harm if she had decided to like hit or kick or anything like that. There's a reason to the resisting arrest law, and that is to prevent injury, discourage health help, and administer justice. The defendant broke the law, and she committed this crime, ladies and gentlemen. At the start of this case, you took an oath. When you first walked through that door, you took the oath to listen to all the facts in this case, listen to all the testimony, and render a fair and just verdict. This case shouldn't be decided out of sympathy for one party or the <coughs> other, but decided on the facts of this case and whether or not the state met and proved to you beyond a reasonable doubt all four elements of the resisting arrest crime. The state is asking that you uphold the law, that you Follow the oath that you took when you walked through that door to render a just and fair verdict in this case. And when you do, the state is confident that you're going to find the defendant guilty of this charge. Thank you. At this stage of the trial, it's my duty to instruct you on the principles of law that you must apply in deciding this case. 